All right, so yesterday we looked at the greatest common factor. Um, so today we're looking at, we have a trinomial, okay, and we're looking at if they're in the form x squared plus bx plus c, which is the standard form. And the other thing about this is with these particular ones, if you notice, there is no letter in front of our x squared. So these have a leading coefficient that is equal to one, which is really nice when it's a leading coefficient equal to one. It's not saying nice, but today it's nice. Okay, so a polynomial with three terms is called a what? I don't know, good. Called a trinomial. Trinomials can often be factored. Remember, factor, if I'm factoring something, I am looking at division. Are we okay there? So it can usually be factored or divided and rewritten into a product of two binomials. So in order to help us do that, like what they want us to do is they want us to multiply these two binomials back together. So we're gonna look at what it looks like going together, which we've been doing, and then we're gonna kinda of look at how we take that apart. So we're gonna use FOIL to put them together. So if I FOIL this first one, my first is gonna give me what? X squared. X squared. My outside gives me? 2X. 2X. My inside is gonna give me? 5X. Positive 5X. <clears throat> and my last is gonna give me? 10X, or just 10 positive 10, and then my next thing to do is to combine, combine right there in the middle, good, so x squared plus 7x plus 10. Are we okay there? All right, so this says right here, if I look at this, so I want us to look at these two binomials, and then I want us to look at the trinomial that we have. So if I look at this right here, and I look at all the pieces, and I look at this middle right here, and I look at seven, look at here, and how do I get to seven? Like, how could I get to seven from what I have? Yeah, we're basically adding those numerical values, right? Adding the outside, are we okay there? So we would, so I'm gonna say the sum of the numerical terms. In this particular case, it is five plus two, which gives me seven. And yeah, we have an X, but we got that, right? Like, we know we got that number. So we're okay, I'm more concerned about how we get that number. We good? Okay. Now, if we look at that, we look at this last term. What's the relationship here in my last term, 10 there? How do we get 10? By doing what? What am I multiplying? Numerical. Yeah, the numerical values. Okay, so this time instead of the sum, we have the product of the numerical terms or values. I mean, look at that. So this time it was five times two, which gave me 10. Are we okay there? All right, so let's go over here and we'll look at this one. We're gonna do the same thing. If I do my first, I get? X squared. X squared. If I do my outside, I get? Negative 3X. Negative 3X. If I do the inside, I get? 7X. 7X, and my last gives me? Negative 21. Negative 21, and then I combine and I get X squared. 4x minus 21. Are we okay there? Okay, so let's look again. My middle, a while ago, I said to get my middle, I would add the numerical values. Is that still true here? If I add 7 and negative 3, does that give me what I need? Okay, so it's still, so it's the same, right? So we still add the... numerical values. So the same thing, I'm just writing it differently. Bless you. All right, so essentially I had negative three plus seven, which gave me positive four, right? Okay, so then I'm looking at that back. How do I get the back? 
I multiply, good, were you finished responding? Yes, sir. Okay. So then I multiply those. So this time I multiply the numerical value. So I had negative 3 times 7, which gave me negative 21. So that same process worked both times, right? Okay, thing we have to be careful with is the signs. Okay. So if I go down here, and again, these mean the same thing. I just wrote it differently. All right, so this says Abigail needs to factor x squared plus 11x plus 30. All right? So using this pattern above, let's describe what would happen. So we are like... Here, I'm not super worried about this because x squared is always going to split it to be x and x because we know that x times x is x squared, right? So we're okay with that. So what do I know about this right here? How would I get 11? Based on what we wrote above, what would we have to do to get it? Add the two numerical values. Add what? Add the two numerical values. Yeah, add whatever the two numerical values right or Okay, so the numerical values must have a sum of what? 11. 11. What else do we know about them? So that takes care of this. What else do we know? There's an X. Okay, I'm not worried about the X. Think about what we did up here. You get the fact number, you multiply the numerical Okay, values. so they should have a sum of 11 and a product, a product of what? 30. Okay, so based on that information, if I was looking at that, I would be looking at numbers that multiply to 30. So my options for 30 would be 1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3 times 10, 4 doesn't go, and then 5 times 6. So of those combinations that multiply and give me 30, which of those combinations would add to give me 11? So I had 1 and 30, 2 and 15, huh? 6 plus 5. 6 and 5. So that would end up being 5 and 6 because 5 times 6 gives me 30 and 5 plus 6 gives me 11. Are we okay with how that works? Okay. So if I have this trinomial that I'm factoring, and it's in this form ax squared plus bx plus c, and I'm factoring it, okay, the first thing that I should always look for is just make sure that there might not be a GCF, which is what we did yesterday because sometimes there is a number out here, which tomorrow there will be. Sometimes there's a number out here and I can take it out as a GCF and it gets me back to just x squared plus bx plus c. Sometimes this is x cubed and this is x squared and this is x and we need to pull an x out. Does that make sense? So we do need to check for a GCF first. I would say for the most part today we're not going to have that, but we will have that, you know, coming up. So just kind of be ready for that, okay? All right, so first thing we're looking at for the GCF. Then we've got to look for two factors or two numbers that have a product of my C value. What is back here at the back? Okay? And then I'm looking for their sum to be whatever this B value is. Okay? And then we're going to use those values to write our binomial factors. Okay? Which are going to be our two little parentheses. So we're so before we went from two parentheses to a trinomial, now we're going from a trinomial backwards. We're going in reverse. Okay? All right. So this says, and I know, here's the deal. These right here are going to be pretty straightforward. You're going to know the numbers right away. We're still going to write this out for now because you need to know that process in case you don't know what it is right away. Okay? So this says the two factors are going to have a product of what here in this problem? What's my product need to be? Six. Six. And a sum of what? Five. Five. Okay, so we're going to approach this, and again, you may already know what it is, but we're going to approach this. I want you to really see this, all right? So the first thing I want you to do is look. So draw you some little eyeballs here on your little look, because y'all know I like to draw little eyeballs. Okay, so look at the C sign first. That's the first.
first place that we're looking. So I'm looking at the sign that is in front of C. So right in front, and C is what in this problem? Six. Six. So I'm looking at the sign here. So that sign is positive, right? So what that positive sign tells me, so the positive says that my parentheses are going to have the same sign. That's what it tells me. It doesn't tell me what the sign is. It tells me that they are the same. So what that means is I can go write my parentheses right here. And I know, here's what I know. I know to get x squared, I know this is going to be x and this is going to be x. Like that is a given. Does that make sense? Now I know that they're going to have the same sign. That's what this told me. Now I look at B. So look at B. Second. Okay. B gives me gives me the sign. If these are the same, then B says right here that they are both positive because B is positive. And that's not always true. That's true if C tells me they're the same, then B tells me the sign. Right? So if they're the same, which in this case they are because this is positive, then my sign is going to be positive. So this is going to be positive and this one's going to be positive. Y'all okay with that rule? Okay, so now I'm going to look at the factors. So really, if I didn't know that, so if I hadn't already told you that about the signs, then I would be looking for the options of six. So y'all remember when we did factors and when we were looking at GCF, and I said, okay, to get six, I would have to do one times six or negative one times negative six. Y'all remember that? And then I could have, what is my option, other option for six? Two times three, or I could have negative two times negative three, right? Those are all of my options to multiply and get six. Now, I'm looking at, remember when we looked at up here to get this middle term, we add together, right? So I'm looking at my sum here, one plus six gives me what? Seven, negative one and negative six gives me? Negative seven, two and three gives me? Five and negative two and negative three gives me negative five. negative five. And I need it to be what? Positive. Positive five, which means it's this one, right? This one. Okay. So I know that my factors are positive three and positive two. I already knew they were positive because I know those rules about the signs. Okay? If you can't remember the rules about your signs, then you're gonna have to do this. You're gonna have to list them all. Does that make sense? Because you've got to find the right combination. Because negative 2 and negative 3 do multiply together to give me positive 6. But they don't add and give me positive 5. They add and give me negative 5. So it doesn't have the right combination. Does that make sense? Okay. So then if I foil this back together, x times x would give me x squared. My outside would be positive 3x. My inside would be 2x, and then my last would be 6, and when I combine right there, I would have x squared plus 5x plus 6. So, now, do I always make you check those back to make sure? I don't, but in this case, like when we're factoring and you're new at this, it's not a bad idea because if you foil that together and you don't get this, it's very likely that either A, you picked the two wrong numbers, or one of your signs was wrong. Okay? All right? So let's look at this one here. So, and if we look at this, I looked at, I used this little rule here. I looked at C, I knew C was positive, so I said they were the same sign. I looked at this, it said they were both positive. That's what I wrote, that's how it worked. Does that make sense? So that is, I teach you that, but we could have discovered that anyway. It's just a little easier if I just teach it to you. All right, so this one here, my factors have a product of what in this problem? 20 and a sum of? Nine. So I'm multiplying to get 20. I'm adding to get nine. If you need to write those, you can do that. If you don't want to write the word factor in some, because I wouldn't, then I would kind of do that. Multiply to 20, add to nine. All right, so my options for 20 in reality would be one times 20, right? It would be two times 10, 
three doesn't work, and four times five. And then in reality, I could have a whole lot of other combinations, right? I could have negative one and negative 20, negative two and negative 10, negative four and negative five, right? Because they're the same sign. And we know they're the same sign, why? Right, this right here says same sign, bless you. So I know they're the same sign, and that sign is? Positive. Sign positive. Okay, so that means when I go down here and write my factors, I can do this, right? X squared is going to split always and be what? X. X and X. X. We already decided that both our signs are positive, positive so I'm going to go ahead and write that. Okay, so now I'm going to go check. 1 and 20 gives me 21. 2 and 10 gives me 12. And 4 and 5 gives me 9, which is the one that I need. Does that make sense? Now, will you have to do this every single time? Not necessarily. Might you have to do it sometimes when there are numbers that you're not as familiar with? Yes. So that's why we're kind of looking at it so that you know how to do it. All right, so I have four and I have five. And the order that these are written in doesn't matter. Like if you write five first and four second, it, it doesn't make a difference. Are we okay? All right, so if I foil that together, my first gives me x squared, my outside gives me 5x, my inside gives me, and my last gives me 20, and when I combine right there, I get what I needed. Are we okay there? Any questions on that? All right, so let's take a look. We're going to keep going. All right, so we take a look at this one. All right, they didn't write all that stuff out for me. That's okay. I'm going to look at my signs. C is what? C is positive. What is a positive C? You tell me. The sign the same. same sign. Okay. Then I'm going to go look at B. B is what? Positive. positive. What does that tell me? C says they're the same. So B says they're both what? Both positive. So I can go ahead and do this. I can write that. I don't know the numbers yet, but I know what the signs are. And what do we usually mess up? Signs. So if I already know the signs, does that make my life a little bit easier? Yes, okay. So now I can make my little chart. Okay. So I'm going to multiply to 8 and I'm going to add to 9. So that's how I wrote that. Does that make sense? All right. So to multiply to 8, I do 1 times 8, 2 times 4. Those are the only options I've got, right? So one plus or one yeah one plus eight gives me nine and two plus four gives me so I need I need one times eight and if I foil that back together it would give me what I need in the middle are we okay there okay all right so if you're checking work that's your way to check is foil them back together make sure you come out right all right let's take a look at this one well, what's going on here. Yeah, C is negative. So if a positive C says they're the same sign, what do you think a negative C says? Different, opposite. different signs or opposite signs. I already went around that. Different signs, opposite signs. All right, B this time is positive. So I'm not going to tell you what that does. We're going to figure it out, okay? And then I'll we'll kind of look at it. So uh, what I know right now is that I have two parentheses. I know x is going to split, or x squared, or z squared, whatever, is going to be x and x, right? And I've decided that my signs are different. different. So one of these is positive and one of these is negative. I don't know which is which, okay? All right, so let's take a look. If I do my little chart, I'm going to multiply to get what? Oh. Careful. Four. Careful. Negative 12. I need negative 12. It's important that we keep the sign there. I'm multiplying to negative 12, but I'm adding to positive 4, right? Because 4 is positive right there, yes? Okay, so if I'm going to multiply two numbers and I'm going to get negative 12 when I multiply, what does that mean about them? One's negative, one's positive, which we already decided that in advance, right? That's what that negative C tells us. All right, so let's look at 12. So I could have... Negative 1, positive 12, right? I could have positive 1, negative 12, 
Are we agreed? Okay, I could have negative two and what? Six, and now I'm gonna do the opposite, two and negative six. Okay, then I could have what? Yeah, three, negative three and four, and then positive three and negative four. And that gives me all my possible combinations, right? Okay. So if I add together then, negative one and 12 gives me positive 11. This one's gonna give me negative 11. This right here is gonna give me what? Four, this gives me Negative four. This gives me what? Negative three and four gives me addition. Positive one and three and negative four gives me negative one. You may not have written them down in the same order I did, but that, those are all the possible combinations that I can have with those numbers. Does that make sense? Okay, and if yours are written in a different order, that's fine. Okay, so those are all my possible combinations. I know that they have to have different signs. That's why I had to do each of those, right? Okay, so if I go down there and I look and I go up there, I need a positive four. So which combination do I need? Negative two, positive six. I needed negative two and positive six. Okay, now we already wrote our signs down here. So the negative is the two and the positive is the six. six. Does that make sense? And if I boil that back together, my outside would be negative two, my inside would be positive six, which would give me a positive four, right? Okay, so if C was negative, and that told me different signs, we already knew that, right? Because positive C means they're the same sign, so clearly the other one tells me different signs. Okay, so when I multiply this and I look at this, B happened to be positive. So when I looked at my two factors, my six and my negative two, what did that positive B end up showing me? What did it tell me about my two numbers? Because I had, because I, we figured out the combination was two and six, but negative two and six worked, but two and negative six didn't work. Well, together, six and negative two gave me B, right? And B ended up being positive, but right? Your first number has to be negative? Like let's look at, okay, so let's say this. Let me, let, me check, let me kind of change my question a little bit. What if B had been a negative number? What if that had been a negative four? Then which combination would I have? It would have been two and negative six, right? Okay, so positive B gave me negative two, positive six. Negative B would give me positive two, negative six. All right, so those signs would be different, right? Okay, so in this case, B was positive. My bigger number was what? Positive. positive. If I switch that and my B is negative there, then my bigger number would have had to be what? Negative. So B is going to tell me the sign of my what? Bigger number. Bigger number. That's what B tells me. Does that make sense? So B's, the sign of B is the sign of bigger number. If C is positive, then B just tells me what their sign is. But if C is negative, then B is telling me which, which of my numbers is my bigger one, so I know which one goes where. If I know which one goes where, it saves me sometimes from having to go through this whole process. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's take a look at this one. C is positive, positive. so what does that mean about my factors? If I'm coming down here, what does that mean about them? Same sign. They're gonna be the same sign. Where do I look for that sign? at B, so they're both gonna be what? Negative. Negative. All right, so I'll go ahead and write that again. C, positive, same, I'm just gonna write the same sign out here. B, negative, means they're both negative. 
So I've got to look at C first. Okay, I'm going to look at the back first to decide if they're the same or they're different. If they're the same, then it's whatever B is. If they're different, then B is my bigger number. We okay there? All right, so I'm looking at my combinations of 10. So sometimes I can make this a little bit easier than I can just do. I can just kind of look at 10. So to get 10, I can do 1 times 10 and 2 times 5, right? And I know the signs are the same. They're both negative. So negative 1 and negative 10 give me negative 7, or negative 2 and negative 5 give me negative 7. Because I wrote them as positive, but it doesn't matter because I know they're both negative, right? So when I put them together, which pair is going to give me the negative 7? Two, 2 and 5, and I know they're both negative here. Does that make sense? Now, I could have done 1 times 10 gives me 11, 2 times 5 gives me 7, and then gone, okay, negative 1 and negative 10 gives me negative 11, and negative 2 and negative 5 gives me negative 7. I could have gone through all of that. But if I kind of have learned how those combinations work, I really just need to know what the numbers are and what the signs are, then I can kind of work backwards on that. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Let's go okay with that? Nothing wrong with writing them all out. You can write them all the way out like this every single time. And I'll have some people that will, and that's okay. All right. So this down here, A and B, we already really know this information because I told you, and we figured out what we got. So this says, which trinomials had a positive C value. So which ones up there had positive C's? 3 and 5. Yeah, numbers 3 and 5. Okay, they had positive C's. So what did we, and we really didn't discover it because I told you, but how did that affect the signs in my binomial factors? If C was positive, what do we know? They all had the same sign. Same sign, okay. So a positive C value tells you the factors, which are your binomials in your parentheses, will have the same sign. So you're either going to have positive positive or negative negative. We okay there? All right, so then it says which trinomials had a negative C value. The only one that we had to have negative C was which one? Four. Four. Okay, what did it tell me when C was negative? Okay, so a negative C value. there? All right. There are times that when we have these factors um, of C with a sum of B where this doesn't work. Where like it just, you do that and it, it just flat won't do. Okay. So for example, if I had a 12 here and this was a 7 right here, none of these combinations ever give me a 7, right? So it just doesn't work. All right, if same thing here, if I looked at this and I had all these written out, which I don't, I can look at those factors and say this was a four. Nothing's ever gonna give me a negative four right there with those combinations. Is that logical? Yes. Okay, so when that happens, it can't be factored and it is called prime. Just like when we have a prime number that doesn't have factors, remember yesterday we had seven and seven's a prime number and it's only factors are one in itself. So there's nothing I can do there it would be considered prime. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. It doesn't happen very often, but it does happen, and when it can't be factored, we have to do other things, but we're not there yet. All right, so let's take a look at this one right here. What do you see? Okay, so C is positive right here. So that means what? Same sign. All right, so then I go over here to B. What does B tell me? 
They're both going to be negative. Or you want to write that. All right, so now I'm looking at my, multi my combinations for 14. So I would have 1 times 14, and what else? 2 times 2. 2 times 7. Are there any others? No, that's pretty much it. Okay, so I'm going to go here. What, is, what are both of these going to start with? X or M, whatever variable. I like X. Okay, y'all already told me the same. The signs were the same, and they are both negative. negative. So which combination up here gives me nine? Two and seven. Two and seven is what I need. We okay there? When they're the same sign, it's usually pretty straightforward. We like those. Okay. All right. If I look at this one, and I go here, this would be X and X, right? This tells me same sign what? Negative. Negative. So I'll write that. And then I'm looking at my combinations for one. What are my combinations for one? One times one. One times one. Is that ever going to add up to negative five? No. I mean, one and one would give me either two or negative two or zero, right? Okay, so that doesn't work. So in this case, if it can't do it, this cannot be factored or it doesn't exist or we can write prime. There are no factors that will make that work. Are we okay there? All right. So then we get to this one. So we're like the same thing. What do I know? I'm going to go ahead and write these. So I know I'm going to start with what? X and X, B and B, however you want to write that. All right, now look here. What does this tell me? My signs are what? Different. Different. So I'm going to put one positive, one negative. I don't care which order you write them in. It makes no difference. It's only up to you, however you want to write it. Okay, so B tells me what? That your bigger number is going to be My bigger number is negative. So when I write my combinations and I do one positive and one negative because I know they're different, I want my bigger one to be? Negative, because that's what y'all just told me. All right, so my numbers for 30 would be, and I'll start at 1, 1 and negative 30, right? 2 and negative 15, 3 and negative 10, 4 does not go, so 5 and negative 6. All right, which one gives me the combination I need? One and negative thirty equals what? Negative what? When I add them together, what do I get? Negative twenty-nine. What about when I add these two together? Negative thirteen. What about when I add these two together? Negative seven. What about here? Which one do I want? Five and six. Yep, I want negative one, so it's got to be this. So since I wrote my negative here, I got to put my six here and I got to put my five here. We okay there? And if you wrote yours in the other order and you worked the subtraction first, then write six first because six needs to be wherever your negative sign is. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. So y'all see what I mean by if you decide your signs first, then if you've got to go list your factors, you know which one to attach the negative to for your addition. Yes, ma'am. Everybody okay there? Okay, because I, I can do, like, for me, I don't do this because I don't need to. But for right now, y'all are probably going to need to do that just because y'all need to see that for a little bit until you get really comfortable. Some of them you may know really quickly. Some of And here's the deal. If you get it and it's the first one you write down and that's the one that works, you don't got to list them all out. Does that make sense? You do what you need to do to find what you need. All right, this one. This says, Darren factored a trinomial and ended up with two binomials in this form right here. And they want us to decide true or false for these statements. This says, Darren's trinomial must have had a negative C value. Did he have to have a negative C to get this combination? Yes. He did, so that is true. Because what do we know? Negative, the signs are different. Yep, because C's is negative, then the signs are different.
So if my signs are different in my binomials, that means my C at the back has got to be negative, right? Okay? It has to be. It's not it can be. It has to be. Does that make sense? All right. Darren's trinomial must have had a negative B value. Does it have to have a negative B value? Could it have had a negative B value? But does it have to have? No. no. So the, the thing here, I guess, the problem is the must is what makes that false. Does that make sense? So to make that true, I would say could have had. Because it could have been negative. It could have been positive. Just kind of depends, right, what the number was. Okay, because we don't know. All right. So then we're over here. It says the area of Mrs. Crocker's rectangular pantry floor can be expressed by this trinomial right here. And it says, list the possible expression for the length and the width. What do you know about length, width, and area? Huh? What do you know about length, width, and area? Area equals length times width. Turn around and tell me if I can't hear you. Area equals length times width. It's length times width. So what they're saying is I took two things and I multiplied them together to get this, right? So if I multiply two things together, then that means I basically need to find out what those two things were. I need to take this thing apart, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So if I have x squared plus 11x plus 24, I need to take it apart. Okay. So first thing I'm looking at is what? My sign. What do I know? Same positive, right? Then I'm looking over here. Well, that's the same. Darn, that tells me false, too. Sorry, got to hit myself. That tells me the same. This tells me they're both positive, right? So now I can go here. This is going to be X and this is going to be X. And y'all just told me they're both positive. Are we in agreement? Yes, sir. All right, so I'm looking for 24. So that's 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and what? 8, 4 and Six, five doesn't go, and that's all I got. All right, which of those combinations is going to give me 11? Eight and three. Eight and three gives me 11. So one of these is three, and one of these is eight, in whichever order. So the length could have been x plus three and the width x plus eight, or vice versa. Does that make sense? Okay, a lot of times I don't do this part down here at the bottom, but I do want to kind of write these rules in so you'll have them. So if I have x squared plus bx plus c. Then my factored form is going to look like x plus some number, x plus some number. Are we okay there? If I have x squared minus bx plus c, that's going to look like what? And they're going to be the same, but subtraction. Are we okay there? All right. If I have, and I know I write small, so you'll write small. If I have x squared plus bx minus c, then one of these is going to be positive. The other one is going to be negative. And my positive one is going to be my bigger number because this is positive. Does that make sense? So then my other option is x squared minus bx minus c, which means I have x minus something, x plus something. And I actually, you know what? Write this in the same order you wrote the other one. I'm sorry. I did plus minus. I'm going to do plus minus again. But this time my bigger number is here where the negative is. Okay, so those are your four options. What you really have to know is that you look at C and decide if they're same or different. Then you go look at B. If they're the same, it's whatever sign B is. If they're different, whatever sign B is, that's your bigger number. Everybody okay there? 